In 2015, a new agreement to address climate change was signed in Paris. Almost all countries in the world committed to reduce carbon emissions through their own national targets, so-called Nationally Determined Contributions, or NDCs. This allowed the countries to increase the ambition of these targets to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. Carbon markets are meant to drive this ambition by making the emission reductions cheaper. They have been used nationally and internationally since the Kyoto Protocol was implemented around 2007. How do carbon markets work? Emission reductions can be costly and the costs vary by country. For one dollar, we can reduce more in one country than in another. It is not important where the emissions and reductions take place, but only that the global sum of emissions goes down. A carbon market makes it possible to trade the reduction units globally so that every country can pay for cutting emissions where it is least costly. For example, it is cheaper to reduce emissions by installing wind power in Morocco than realizing reductions in the Swiss transport sector. So Switzerland may want to buy reduction units from wind power projects in Morocco. NDCs can be achieved through reductions at home or purchased somewhere else. In theory, carbon markets should lower costs of reducing emissions and thereby encourage more ambitious NDCs. Great! Problem solved! But this is theory, and in practice, things look a little different. The devil is in the details, and in the past, carbon markets have suffered from many failures and lack of oversight. Under the Kyoto Protocol, a key risk is selling emission reductions that would have happened anyway. Imagine a country has to make a decision whether to build a new coal-fired power plant or to invest in renewable energy. The decision will depend on the cost of constructing and operating the different technologies. The wind energy project would also generate revenues from selling reduction units to the carbon market. This would make it cheaper than coal power. This would generate additional emission reductions because the project would not happen without the financing through the market. But perhaps in another country the wind blows more strongly and thus the wind turbines are cheaper than coal even without the revenue from the carbon market. In this case, the project would not generate additional reductions and thus should not qualify for the carbon market. During the first years of the international carbon markets, additionality was not stringently managed. Since then, increased regulatory scrutiny has improved the situation. However, still non-additional projects are registered and regulation needs to be further developed. Emission reductions are the difference between the estimated emissions without the project compared to the measured emissions with the project. One further challenge is a problem we call perverse incentives. A well-known example of perverse incentives was a program in Hanoi which offered a fee for every rat tail handed in. Intended to exterminate rats, the program instead led to the farming of rats. Similarly, carbon markets provided a perverse incentive to increase production of certain polluting chemicals in order to reduce them later and generate reduction units. There are many other challenges in carbon markets. For example, hot air due to economic downturn, for example in Russia, laundering of units, baseline overestimation, overallocation or fraud. VAT fraud alone costs taxpayers more than 5 billion euros. Carbon markets are powerful climate policy instruments, but a badly designed market can undermine the integrity of the entire climate policy. Therefore, one has to ensure that problematic reduction units of the Kyoto Protocol that are still circulating are not used in future markets. So it is critical that markets are designed well and subject to effective regulation and oversight if they are to be used as policy instruments. The new carbon market mechanism, described in Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, 
is expected to be designed at the next UN Climate Conference in December 2019 and during future international conferences. Article 6 can represent a fundamental shift in the role carbon markets play in addressing the climate crisis if we learn from the past mistakes and ensure that markets provide overall emission reductions, encourage higher levels of ambition, and expand the scope of NDCs. However, future carbon markets come with new risks, such as double counting. Imagine a country sells reduction units for its renewable energy project to another country, and at the same time claims these for its own NDC targets. Two countries cannot claim the same reduction. Since reduction units are permissions to pollute, claiming one reduction twice would increase the amount of carbon burned. The SNIS project will provide a guide on how to best design oversight to prevent double counting and other potential risks, so that we can trust carbon markets. If governments agree to introduce a market system, they must ensure it works properly and achieves effective reductions in global emissions.